How does everybody feel that the OCS summit went last week? I thought it was pretty good. It was nice to talk to so many people. I feel like a lot of times the conversations in this meeting have been you know, like two people agree and then we need three people who aren't there to agree to actually make some mm -hmm. progress. And it was nice to have in a quorum enough uh, to, to actually like have an authoritative group. I don't think we like came to any conclusions of anything, but it was nice to at least have a quorum ish. Yep. And I think the thing that I'm still you know, kind of like feeling nice about is that there was a different level of conversation that there were people in person that, you know, I won't really say intensity, just the nature of conversation that people that were in person were able to communicate that just is not conveyed over video um, chats. And I think it allowed everybody, even on the video chats, to participate in that same similar way. But um, I, think it's, I think it's a symptom of what a number of communities are feeling of just like not having the moments in between where they can like chat and laugh and be humans rather than just like we're on a meeting let's talk meeting and then not personally socially interact outside of it so i think that was that part was really nice so um good and um, i think we have enough Maybe not that many people actually on here, only 11, but um, particularly, um, Sajay asked to resurface this extensions proposal. Now it's, uh, I've, I've wanted to close it a couple of times since I've opened it and it's been discussed and it's been whiteboarded and we've gone and around it a little bit. And uh, that's why I kind of wanted to get something out on the email thread about it beforehand, but apparently you and Steven chat about it. So I'm glad that you are both on the call. Um, so uh, I, I will let you get into it because I know that you have looked at it in particular detail, Sajay, as it relates to some of the design that you've gone into for the references API um, or refers API. Um, but yeah, I'm sure you have something particular. Yeah, um, so the the PR thread, um, the last comment or the second last comment that Steven has, I think we, we went through a couple of rounds um, on the on the specific implementation or the details of where to kind of host it under slash p2 um, we are also of the same opinion that moving it outside uh, slash v2 is going to create a bunch of challenges for operators who have ingress controllers and whatnot so that all uh, seems to be um, in line with what uh, i had chatted with the only difference i think that uh, from the last part of the proposal was that uh, of explicitly calling out uh, the path, right? You want you have a discovery extension that's that can be clients can actually hit with an underscore ext, and then you can find out what all are the paths that uh, the client can access, or, or if it's not supported. So the major motivation for kind of like making um, want, wanting to kind of put this on the table was if we wanted to start maybe a PR or a design into the distribution implementation. Uh, without this being closed, it's going to be hard to get the conversation as to where does this land and the changes would all be um, kind of like queued up as to uh, the URL path for where we can hit this API. Um, the other thing is this is mostly additive. It doesn't change any of the existing APIs, but there's one, one portion of the artifact spec that might is, is orthogonal to the extension specification itself. The extension is just about discovery. And I think as long as we have a way in which clients can discover the location of the API and they understand that, then we most of the scenarios are unblocked uh, for being able to query reference artifacts, like can we query by um, some digest, all those scenarios can enable. And 
uh, other extensions can also kind of like come along. So that's the motivation of this. My question was more in terms of um, how do how do we want to progress to get closure on this design, or do you want me to talk about uh, this? Because Stephen, if you can kind of like chime in about your last comment, because that kind of summarizes exactly what uh, yeah. the proposal itself, right? Can you all hear me? Okay. All right, great. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, and yes, this is an office behind me. So if you guys, it's, it's very weird. There's nobody else here. So, uh, it's, it's very, very spooky. So, but that spooky is for October, right? Um, okay. So, um, yeah, so th there's, there's two things. Um, okay. So there's two things I wanted from the extension API. One of them was, I, I really wanted to get us out of the, the, um, business of parsing path parameters. Um, like, I think we made some pretty difficult choices in the, uh, in the original kind of way we index names and that's pretty solid now. And I think if we add more path parameters in there. Um, it can make it difficult to parse in the future. So my recommendation was to kind of have fixed paths, uh, that are defined by the extension. So that would like reference, a um, a, a sub component or a service inside of the extension a relatively fixed set that you can query through that extension interface and then uh, be able, and then all of the user level input would go in as path uh, as uh, query parameters. And, um, and, and I, th I think that would make implementations uh, and um, compatibility a little easier. Um, the other piece to it is the, I kind of wanted to like, I, wanna, I kind of wanted to, uh, to trampoline off of the catalog API design. It's not the best in the world, but at least at the path level, it's it's fairly safe and it's pretty straightforward. Um, what we didn't do with the catalog API though was hang it off of an individual repository. Um, so I think for extensions to be useful, we need to have two kinds of extensions. We need to have like a root extension and this would be like uh, slash v2 underscore and then whatever the extension name is. And then we need um, extensions that can hang off the repository. This would allow you to go off of any name and, and, and root from there. Um, and so th those are the, those are the two major points in that comment. I'm not sure if I missed anything. Um, does everybody, is, is anybody like, like wild, does, does anybody like wildly disagree with that idea? Or is that like, those, are, those seem like sane restrictions to put in place. I'll go in the category of wildly agree with it. I, I think it's a good suggestion. Um, the only question I think I have is I think we said that we're looking for to see this fleshed out in an example use case scenario and to see some users trying it out first before we sure. approve it within OCI. And so that might inverse what I think Sajay is looking for, which is to see this get approved and then use it with the reference types. It might make more sense to try it out with reference types and then see how that works to come back and get this approved. Yeah. Um, so I think I think it makes sense. Like I said, get, making things, okay, so let me just from all the ways that this conversation has gone and even where, where you're arriving at a, a way to, because like, again, nobody's, no, nobody's stopping anybody from adding endpoints to a registry implementation. Many people already do. This is just making it a way to discover it. So what I was, one of the original thoughts was and even if you look at the dumb you know actual changes that are in the, the files that i've made we're like if it becomes canonical then you know there's ways that somebody could see some not you know moniker or mnemonic code or you know like whatever like whatever the extension is like you're saying the file path or the extent the endpoint path that it's going to be at this is almost like the feature flag that here's some extensions and maybe even a link to the docs of where to find like whether it's json schema or whatever like what if somebody has even added their own arbitrary extension you could hit that endpoint and find out more information about it um that's that's kind of like the discovery piece of like where to find those endpoints um something that um was brought up in the OCI summit last week was like, that's fine uh, to have these kind of extensions as long as effectively they're optional. Uh, and so th this is where we, I think 
classically can kind of go around in circles, but I just want to make it as clear as possible that there are these extensions possible. People are already doing them for their own repos, whether it's you know any cloud provider or otherwise to enhance. The, there's a little bit of trickiness and care and concern in this to, to deal with like life cycling those endpoints of like, we added something, you know, the, the references version one, and then we found we did it wrong and we had to kind of like make a v, V2 of it. How do you say that this is new a, a new and or behaving different endpoint? You don't have to use it. It's optional as an endpoint. But if you do start using it, then there's these other within itself musts or shalls or whatever. And that's like where you kind of point to some other ready doc of like, here's how this endpoint behaves. And it might have its own musts nested inside there, but use of that endpoint at all is effectively optional. So some way to keep that documented or you know behavior is discoverable among users or enough information that a client could point back information and say, you know, here's a registry and it provides these endpoint, here are these additional extensions, here's the docs on them, you know, giving people enough information to bubble it up. So that's kind of like endpoint discovery is one concern and kind of life cycle. And then from the comments that you're just saying, and even from the last couple of comments, I think are good that you can then say, cool. So it has this extension added in. Here are the endpoints that you can start finding it at. And they're all nested past slash v2 slash name or whatever it is. Um, something that where the scope and ACLs and otherwise are already effectively determined for that client's session. Um, so those, those two things are just really the balancing act that, um, we can be on, on page with, and I'm fine with updating this, this, uh, PR and even like hack, you know, we can start hacking on it straight away. Uh, I think you already, some folks have already started making some good updates, so like in a hack MD and that's good. Um, And one thing in the way that you just said it, Sajay, that I don't think I want, a, like I don't think we want to get into, but it probably needs some kind of verbiage somewhere, is if a client hits the discovery endpoint of like seeing what extensions even exist on the server, if for whatever reason, even the response that the client gets back is filtered based on that client's current scope or ACLs, like if you've authenticated that you see different or, you know, you have value add services like your special kind of customer and you see different extensions that you didn't when you weren't authenticated. I don't think I want to go down that path yet. <laughs> so either calling it out specifically of like the, the, the discovery endpoint, you know, should be, should be, you know, generic regardless of ACLs even if the behavior that they get when they hit those endpoints might be, you know, requiring ACLs or something like that. Right. Because none of the distribution spec calls out the actual uh, ACL scope of what tags or what repositories need to be returned. Right. So I think we can keep the, the model the same for these um, if folks have no concerns on that. Uh, but it's very simple uh, from a discovery standpoint. I think that's why that was the premise of this, just keeping it as simple as possible with a list of uh, endpoints that the client can use um, and it can be under this path. Uh, otherwise, my concern is that every registry operator like Harbor has an example of uh, attached uh, attachments or uh, that they have a concept of attaching certain things to images. All those can could have potentially been under a path like this. Um, Brandon's question about whether we want the spec approved before we get the reference implementation, I'm open to it either way. Uh, but as long as we can um, see that there is forward motion on both sides, then making the PR into distribution is, is going to be, uh, and showing a reference implementation would be a little more straightforward. 
um, that's that was the motivation for the discussion. It's it's not about getting the PR in or anything. Like that. I just wanted to open up the discussion whether it's something that folks want to proceed with and make progress on. So, uh, um, okay. So so first, I think based on what Vincent said, we need to have careful ex- uh, def- careful specification of the extensions endpoint. I, I don't know. I'm just dropping some JSON in here. I, I, I like to like have something in my head and this is what I'm, oh, this is terrible, but it, it, hopefully this like, we, we can get something like this in the spec where you can hit the extensions endpoint. The response type is clear. Uh, we'll have an Did OCI you paste something stuff. somewhere? I, I paste it. I just paste it in the chat. It, it, it's, it's incorrect, but use some, you know, use some imagination and maybe we can, I mean, I, is this already in this, in the proposal? I haven't looked at it uh, in the last week or so. Um, but you know, ideas, name, doc, path. Some, you know, we have a list of things. You get them, uh, and you know, we can we can add fields to it as we discover. Um, but like, I'm not saying we do this exactly. What I'm saying is just I think this endpoint, like underscore extensions, would be a preferable path for it. But uh, we need to define that one carefully. Um, yeah. And then I think. And so question- there, there is something like that. I think it, it the, yeah. the um nesting it where you have like the extension or the x that's the part where it's like maybe nesting that somewhere past like the bracket name so that you already can kind of see i don't know what like so you say you've we're not re re recreating past but that's kind of getting into the details Then, Um, then then what i want us to be careful about is how we so do we do this? So the so there's this is the root level extensions, right? How do we refer to repository level extensions, right? So like, do we have the same extension endpoint hanging off of uh, something like um, OCI? Let's see, let's do name. I'm typing in the thing. So give me a sec. OCI extensions. So do we have to discover it on a per rep- repository level, or do you want to discover it at the root and then have the root tell you what individual repository extensions there are. Right now, I can't think of a use case where the repository ones would be different, but that might just be outside of my imagination. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, I I mean, I can't think of a use case off the top of my head either, but like just the relationship between things seems reasonable. So, So I guess if we can't think of a use case, we should have a way to refer to repository level like extensions that are, they would have different return values per repository at the root level so that they can uh so that we can understand okay i have a root level extension versus a versus a repository level extension um and then the other thing I'm sorry oh go ahead yeah you're almost leaning into a uh you know an off kind of scenario where each you know each repository may have a different you know self side off kind of algorithm or something to that effect but we're trying to stay away from auth, right? So yeah. But but are we not are we not supporting something like that? I mean, because I think for to to do references, we we have to have have repo level extensions. I think there will be repo level extensions, but I think that you can define them at the global level. Like you okay. hit the API at the repo level, but you could say this is just installed on the registry, so you can go to any repo and potentially hit this API. Okay. I think an illustrative use case of repo level extensions in general is rolling out this feature across repos. You might not want to enable it for all repos. You might want to have alpha, you know, alpha experimental repos that are opted into my extension uh, until you roll it out to everybody. I have a, I have a question about the, the value of a, uh, an API endpoint that returns a list of enabled features. Generally, I assume people are going to use that like get the list of all extensions and then see if the extension I care about is enabled, right? Do we have, do we imagine a use case where a client would want to list and then just consume that list or, do, or, or I think most cases it would be, is references enabled for this repository, um, this specific issue, like this specific extension. And in that case, I wonder if we can just use the exist, the response of that path if I do if I do repo slash underscore ext references and it returns a 404, that means this repo doesn't support references. Or if it does respond and responds with the uh, uh, 
you know, documentation stuff for icons or blah, 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 or whatever, then I say, oh, this repo does support references and now I can use that. I don't know what the value is basically of an API that returns enabled features because all I'm gonna do is pick out the feature I'm about to use and then use that. And I could avoid that hop by just hitting the endpoint for the feature I'm about to use. That's a, that's a fair point. And I, I think we should give guidance on using um, kind of, what's, what's, what's the right word? Like a, like a query style request, like a discovery request to, to discover features in there as well. Um, I think, I so, think my, my main point though, is that like people aren't going to want to discover all features. They're going to want to discover the feature they're caring about yeah. using right now. Yeah. So, I, so, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, no, I, I get that. And I think, I think we should be clear about that and expect that that's an okay way to discover the extension. Right. But then if that becomes the, the preferred way or the expected way, then we don't need the list at all. Right. Yeah, that was kind of why I was leaning toward putting extension as an extension itself, the extension directory as an extension itself. And that way people might not even want to implement that directory. Because from one, one standpoint, that's a security question of maybe you can discover an extension that has a security vulnerability in there. and You didn't have to query the registry for all of them. You can just hit one API that just tells you everything it's got. Separately, I'm also not sure what the value is of having registry level extensions versus repository level extensions. In practicality, people are only going to deal with repositories and only really want to know whether it's enabled for the repository they're about to push to or interact with or whatever. So if I'm about to, like, if I'm about to push something with references to my uh, repository, do I have to check the registry level as support for it and then the repository level support for it and then do it? Or can I just well, check the repository and then do it? Well, and that's where a couple of these things, even it, when like John and I were play, playing out the kind of like refers or references. So say you attach, you push a blob that, you know, might be a signature scan result and then you want to push another like um, effectively making a reference between like that blob that I pushed is a type of a you know, scan result that references this other blob or, you know, it could, which could be a manifest. It could even just be, you know, particular tarball. Um, and some of those kind of like, what kind of endpoints would you need at that point where you're saying, actually show me all types of scan, you know, all scan results for scan result types for this particular digest. And so at this point, it's kind of abstracted away from even names, names of images. Um, Cause you might have that particular tarball show up in other images, um, which some of those things are like, is that a repo level or is that a registry level? kind of a, you know, endpoint or request to say, here's actually the digest of an image that I'm interested in. Show me all, all, all things that refer to this particular digest, signatures or whatever it is. That's not really a repo level request anymore. But it's, because it's, because it's scope is registry wide, because it's scope might be, might include the response might include things that are outside of the the repository in question. Yeah. So say anybody that's done a from from Debian, um, and so they have the Debian, you know, tarball at the base of the stack of their images, and then you start getting into like, okay, well, show me anything that's or anybody that's put the signatures on or anything that, I don't know, like it's kind of contrived as a use case, but that's part of people wanting to be able to like sign or attest different parts of the stack, not just the leaf manifest at the end of it or leaf index, image index at the end of it. Um, one thing I kind of wanted to bring up is can we specul speculatively, can I even say this word? 
can we speculatively approve this specification and like put it in there in in the spec as like this is what we think it's going to be like but it's not fully approved yet and then come back and approve it later that way like like sajay could um not be blocked and then we kind of move on like and then we come back later and say this is good or it needs these changes right because i feel like our our doubts well, here are like okay we can't think through all the use cases and we don't know if it's actually correct and so we need an implementation to prove that this works and yeah um so like i'm fine approve like if like the getting something in place to approve uh, yeah, my, it, it, it basically two things we haven't made distribution spec 1.0 that's a conversation i think that a lot of us have effectively left on the table as reiterate so basically yes sure why not it's not 1.0 yet secondarily um we've never really leaned into any kind of like alpha beta stable process but that's effectively what you're asking about of like this this particular part of the docs is to be considered alpha wait wait is am i speaking out of uh, yeah i'm like i, I think yeah, I, I, one I think i told people i i helped with no one did one we release we did eight. that it's yeah we're 1.0 we yeah. totally did it yes. then I, I just woke up under a tree 40 years later um it's been a hell of a week it's okay we're, 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 we're all there man <laughs> but so that put something on Twitter about, but an, an alpha 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 beta stable workflows is the main point there that I was thinking about that yeah. um, to say like actually this thing might be subject to drastic changes and you know expect expect changes ahead. It's also um, one dot is tagged, and so you could say sure we can merge this into master and maybe put a little text by it saying this is kind of an alpha we're thinking about it but we haven't yeah. tagged a 1.1 1 .1 yet and so it's not a release version of this it's just what we're looking at for the version next yeah i mean the the thing here is like if if i lgtm it and we merge it it's there forever but if i can lgtm it and say hey let's try this out for a little bit like that makes my lgtm like the level i need to get to that lgtm a lot less and I think that would move things along a, a lot quicker. And I don't think we really need to des define a process. We can just say, hey, this section is alpha quality that it's subject to change. And we can agree on that and kind of move forward on it. Does that seem reasonable or is, or is my? If it's not tagged, is it really there forever? I mean, yes and no, but. It, 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 the, the default is to eventually just leave what's there and eventually tag it. So. I'd say yes, but maybe that's. It makes sense, Stephen, we, that we would accept a, a way to do extensions as an alpha yeah. kind of API, that, that's fair. The question is also whether that would satisfy Sajay, like a provisional accepted alpha extension API, is that enough to unblock distribution from doing the thing that they want? Or do they need it to be fully stable, set in stone? I think we have, uh, I think Stephen can comment on that. But my hope is that even if there is a provision, there can be a configuration flag on distribution that enables this or disables this accordingly, right? So if you were to make a PR into distribution, then we can point to this is the alpha part of the spec that's disabled by, de by default. Uh, and people who want to enable it and try it out as an alpha, the onus is on them to make sure that that section is enabled. Uh, and maybe when the spec is flipped to uh, maybe a release part, we can enable that as, as we see appropriate. The, uh, right now, I'm glad that the conversation is going in a positive direction. Uh, what I do want to make sure is that uh, if, if we were able to get some consensus on this side, then a default disabled extension discovery API on distribution is what I would kind of like approach with uh, to kind of talk to the distribution maintainers and going forward. Does that make sense? Sorry about the background music if, if you folks are hearing it. When you say default disabled, do you mean it's not a must have API? Right. 
um, at least for distribution, because I don't think we want to open that up right now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I like that. That's fine. I mean, I think like the spec as it is today, like we had the advantage of implementing it. So, and it has a bunch of hindsight. So I, I don't see any reason not to give other people that the chance of the hindsight to be able to come back and fix things with it. I mean, there are problems obviously, but like we had an implementation in place and I don't see right why we can't do that in distribution and have a enable alpha features. I think many projects have that. Kubernetes has it, Rust has it. No reason we can't have it. I think it would ease, I think it would ease a lot of things. Are we making progress here? I can't tell if people are smiling or. I haven't heard anybody say they don't want to have a uh, an alpha level API extension for you know being able to where, find extensions. Where would we define that? Just does somebody want to take us? Can somebody take a stab at? A, we take we can take CJ's MD and just link yes. it. Yeah, right. slap it on the top and do slap it. Slap it. Yep. Well, I'm just saying if we if we if if you know if if we did just arbitrarily say this is alpha and subject to change or whatever, even if it gets tagged in a v101, defining what that even means, I feel like there needs to be like a small blurb, even if it's in the readme or something of like. Yeah, yeah, and the readme is what I was going to suggest too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so right underneath the somebody, spec, just say, here's some wanna, stuff we're talking about doing. Will somebody raise their hand to, to take a stab at that PR? Sure. Mike Brown raised his hand. Yep. Okay. And I'll, I'll um, point, point to an empty MD and say they can push a PR or, or I can just copy his, whatever. All right. Mm -hmm. you, you can ping me, Mike. I'll review it. Sure. Starting the text now. Are we moving on or um, are people still processing? Um, I think we're about ready to move on. I just one one last thing. So, Saje, are you thinking? Are you are you? I guess. Do you want me to close my PR and you're going to open one, or do you want me to cargo cult the changes and give you and Steve an attribution? I think you can keep the same PR because there's a lot of good discussion in it. So, just attribution is fine. Or even if you, I mean, we've already had the discussion, so I don't have any concerns on how this needs to go. But the same PR keeps the history at least. Okay. All right, Nisha, feel free to take it. Hi. Um, so it depends upon uh, what you want to discuss. The quick action item on the on the issue that I filed, or the diagrams. Um, hopefully reflecting the summary of what we were discussing about how to incorporate uh, incorporate references into the OCI image spec right now. Sounds like the uh, floor is yours. You get to pick which direction. Um, I, I pick then um, the pictures because I like pictures, but um, Brandon, I also see that you you put your name on that as well. Do you want to show uh, your pictures? I think they um, describe the problem pretty well. Sure. Get this so I can share it for you. Pick 
a window, any window. All right, so uh, I wish they kept the whole Zoom screen when I do this stuff. The way that I've got it sorted out now was a little PDF I dropped in the Slack, but the idea was you would have, just take an example from a day, you have a couple images out there, say it's a multi-platform image. So you've got the x86 and the ARM image, and it's got the config and the layers under it with all the blobs and the index that points to both of those or you know, in the Docker world, the manifest list. And so what we're trying to add is the signature and the SBOM on top of that. And so we've potentially got something there. We just need to find a way that we can add this to this object. And so one thing that was going around the conversations last week, I think, was if we allow reference types, that means that someone could potentially just update the index after the fact, if they had right access to the repo and they had a concern about that because they really rely on the digest. And so you could potentially just update this index and just have more entries in the index. When you do that though, the digest is gonna change. And so that's good and bad, um, depends on your use case. For a lot of people that use case might be that, hey, changing this digest, not so good because they rely on that staying the same with all their workflows. But other people may wanna say, hey, I wanna know when I pull that digest, I get all the objects associated with it and nothing else, nothing someone pushed after the fact. And so it gives them that control they're looking for. So depending on the use case, maybe that makes sense. But the uh, other way was you could kind of do some theoretical reverse pointer where you said, you know, signatures got some kind of way to say that it's got a manifest. And so that might need to be a different object or maybe you put an index in front of it, however that works out that it has the digest pointing up to the index. And when you do that, you've got the signature pointing down to its blobs, but it also points up there. And so that kind of gives you an association, but I don't really see a good way you could use this to query. Um, yeah, there are a whole bunch of problems with it. And the, the least of which was when you do a garbage collection, the thing that's tagged the root of this whole tree was this upstream index. I said, this was like the V1.5 tag. And so if that's the root of the tree, well, these aren't, children of this, you know, the signature has this as a child. It's the other direction with that pointer. And so when we do the garbage collection, we say, look, here's the tag. Here are all the children of the tag. Keep all those things. This stuff is just hanging out there. There's nothing pointing to it. And so it will get cleaned up at that point. So the cosine model went a little different direction where they said, just give everything a tag. And so we've got the digest here, A1, B2, C3 for this index. So they tag their image with a one, B2, C3, whatever, the same as the SHA, the same as that digest, dot sig, dot SBOM to give you the different types. So there's some logic there. Um, the pro is that each one of these things stands independently. And so you can delete the image and this stuff still stands around. That's good and bad, depends on your use case, depends on what you want. Um, the one challenge that I don't like about this that doesn't work so nicely when you start adding multiple signatures. So if you try to push a second signature, are you going to overwrite the last signature? Or do you have to have an extra layer on top of this with some kind of index that has all the signatures in it? Or maybe you modify the signature to have multiple blobs in there of all the different signatures that are attached to it. Not sure how that works out, but there potentially get race conditions you have to work out. And I think we've got um, some proposals out there to do e-tag checking and things along those lines to handle those race conditions. But just one more thing we have to think about. And like I say, if you do the garbage collection, if you go out and clean up that V1 or V1.5 tag, it would delete all the stuff under that tag, but all this other stuff would still sit out here. And so you would need some other process to go through and do that cleanup after the fact. And so the one we've been looking at lately has been reference types, where when reference types are being proposed, they wanted to essentially put something in the signature that had that reverse pointer. And we've got a couple proposals out there and one of them is to make a special signature kind of object, the artifact spec object that has this type in there and it can point back up. And the other one is that we can basically add a reference to just about anything in the repo. There are references all over the place you could potentially add. So if we were to put it right here in the signature, it effectively creates a reverse pointer. What you're saying is, hey, I've got this reference here from index point down. And so I've got all these blobs and so, it gives us a way we can add signatures. So if we want to later on add more, we can keep adding more signatures on this stuff. And they're just additional things that come back. Does mean that we're gonna to have to have some kind of new API to query all these to look them up, but it had some nice features in there. 
not the least of which was garbage collection. You go out there and say, delete all the 1.5 tag. It deletes this whole image, but it also says, hey, all these things were hanging out by themselves with uh, nothing that they were referring to anymore. The thing they were referring to was deleted. So we can potentially clean those up as well. And the one that we've been going back and forth with in the chat over and over again, um, that I probably want to spend the most time here today chatting about, was if we start to allow references to happen to everything, we run into that looping issue. I think this was something that Jason Cormack was mentioning with his universal proposal, and I'm not sure that got enough attention from some of the other proposals we've been looking at, which is if you allow anything to have a reference to it, you can potentially push an index. And since the child of an index can potentially be another manifest, you could also set your reference to be one of your children, and that creates a loop. And so the the solution here from when you have to know at, the hashes beforehand, that's like a one in a bajillion. So no, you I don't think you do. Because this is creating a reverse pointer, the hash I know when I create this bad index, my child here is a one, b two, c three. It's the index right here. And then I create a reference of something that it had. Or it could even be the same index. I could say the reference is the same thing and then you just kind of create a two two pointer reverse loop there. But I made it one extra layer removed where I said, okay, the digest this thing was B, BBB222. I know both of those when I create this. And since I'm creating that reverse pointer, since I know something about my child within this branch, I can create my child pointer and a reverse pointer here with the reference, both in the same index. And so I think you can create this, create a loop intentionally that would break things. But the, the way you can do that is only if the object that you're creating can itself have manifest as a children and the references point to manifest. If we did blobs, that would be a whole different thing. But if we limit our reference and say the reference can only be to a manifest, then the question is if your child object can include a manifest, so if an index can have manifest within an index, that's where the problem came in that I was looking at. Okay. Um, is that, is that yeah. logical making sense? Uh, it makes it makes sense to me. Does it make sense to everyone else? Yeah, and also, especially for Vincent, because you're you're pointing that out, and then I know that's been like part of the logic there, and that's been some of the stuff I've been thinking about when I'm looking at niches, where depending on the objects you create, you can't make like a pointer back to yourself because you would have to know the digest of yourself. It would be you know creating a creating a hash collision there that would be very difficult to create. But can as I, long as you. Uh, sorry, Brandon. Can I take a quick step back and uh, yeah. ask the uh, the group? Um, is this something uh, we want to support? Uh, is appending artifacts to um, to an existing manifest without updating the manifest? Uh, is that something we want to support? Because that's the that's the first use case that uh, Brandon had brought up, which is that yes, we have a, a DAG, uh, but there are a lot of uh, cases where you don't want to update the DAG, the whole DAG. You just want to append things to the DAG. I think that all those all those kind of things, even if we even if you're semantically calling them appending, are truly just that they're 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 not in the critical path of like a manifest. They're not they're 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 available through some like side query that like show me all the things that reference this manifest. It's not like they're actually appending to the manifest. And if you want to make a union view at the end of like, like for a data reason, like here's this manifest and here's all these other references related to that manifest. That's something that happens basically post-processing. Am I, guess am, am I wrong in that? Or are you talking about, cause we're not, we're not talking about appending anything that would change the manifests checksum. Like those things are immutable. Uh, the, by that, I mean, uh, like in the first diagram, which is if you connect, like if you if you have the image index and you add a new manifest to that image index, then 
the image index index indexes digest, digest changes. changes. Yeah. So uh, that's how it works. And it's a new now. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it might be good to go back and look at schema one and why we kind of cut away from that signing model. Um, the the first difficulty was uh, that each time you signed it, you would change the thing you're signing, right? And, and I can kind of see that in the diagrams. I'm not claiming to understand all the details here, but, um, and I'd have to like look at it more closely to better understand that. But um, once you change the thing that you're signing, now you take the ability away. You, you, now you require coordination externally to actually build that thing, right? So let's say you have your um, your image build, your signature. So, well, you have to you have to build the image before everything, right? And that's one coordination problem. But that's that's usually pretty straightforward. Now, you have to have a signing and an SBOM and a vulnerability scan all coordinated. Now, you can kind of do that, and it's okay. But it's probably more efficient to generate things like an SBOM and a vulnerability scan concurrently. Um, but how do you control that update? Like, like what happens if they go update the same thing at the same time? Um, there's a lot of difficulties there. So like it, the having a signature reference from the manifest and actually changing the, the hash of the thing that you're, you're trying to annotate, I, I think is just, I think it is difficult. Um, I'm not sure which project it was, but they used um, like, Specially named tags to reference a signature. That so I think that's cosine. cosine. That's cosine. Is that cosine? Mm -hmm. I I thought that I thought like that has some discoverability problems. Yes, but at the same time, it like it kept the integrity of the image uh, at at the the top level uh, consistent through the process of actually signing it, and then it also is compatible with systems that don't know about the signature scheme and, and stuff like that. So. Um, yeah, but that's, that's just my two cents, but I like, like go back and look at like schema one was, was had some problems for some other reasons, but like, it would be good to go back and really look at that in detail and see kind of why they arose. Um, and, uh, cause, cause this, so the way schema one worked is you had, let's see, did we embed, I think we embedded the, the layers in there and then the config was embedded and, uh, when and then it used um pretty json web signatures i think we called it um which was a uh from a blog by um i think brad fitzpatrick maybe um and uh the issue was that like each time you signed it it would add a new signature to this whole blob thus changing the digest of the thing that you were trying to it, it, yeah I, I, I would just look at it in detail and see if we're trying to do something similar at this level, it might be good to um, uh, kind of understand why that didn't work that well and see if we can avoid those uh, those pieces of it. Yeah, I think the V1 is probably the most similar to this where you're modifying that index every time you add a signature into this stuff. And so it's not yes. tightly into the image, but it's still, you're modifying something to do that. And so Cosine definitely went this direction where they said, let's make a separate tag that's going to be a whole isolated thing with its own tag and the name just happens to be the digest of this thing we're talking to or referring to so that is an approach um the reference so, types itself is just saying instead of making it a tag make it a field inside and so when you look at the actual json what it ends up looking like is you're just going to have a field in there that says my reference is and then the descriptor i'm pointing to and so it's part of your object that you're creating is just to have these references in there where it creates this back pointer at that point. And so that, I, I know the comment in there was, you know, we still haven't modified this. We haven't changed at all this index, the image, anything in there that digest maintained exactly the same. So we didn't change the DAG, but I think the question becomes what is a DAG because it is, we're making a graph and when we make this reverse pointer, we are adding something to the graph even though we haven't modified this object directly, we modify it externally. So I would say from my perspective, uh, there are many use cases with SBOMs that require 
well, the, require the S bombs to be attached to the image. Um, if if you are in a development workflow where you are adding S bombs as you are uh, developing on top of the images, it becomes uh, more and more difficult to or organize all of the artifacts. Um, so for at least from my perspective, I see the benefit of keeping both that uh, DAG thing to, um, you know, strongly connect all of those artifacts, but also like the flexible, um, uh, I'm gonna call, I don't know what to call it, uh, <laughs> flexible appending or flexible attaching um, during a development workflow. So um, you can you can see what's attached, you can uh, you can promote some of those attached artifacts and get rid of the other ones uh, when mm -hmm. you're publishing. So that's um, that's what I see is beneficial. Um, I think during the OCI summit, when uh, Steve Lasko was presenting, there seems to they seem there seem to be like some unanimous consen uh, uh, consensus that this is something we'd like to add. But I just want to bring it back and see if like that's that's really really something that we want to add. Because there was there was some pushback as to how this is getting added, and that's that's what started this conversation. Like uh, the way I was seeing, it, looking at it was like, okay, what's what's keeping us back from, you know, uh, adding a reference to the existing index manifest. So modifying one of these things is one of the quite, yeah. And so we're making OCI artifacts today. That would be a modification to the to the image. Um, I, I can got, I can present uh, my pictures now if you want, so uh, you can see yeah, like. I want to first real quick. We've got a couple of proposals out there, and one of them was the artifact spec, which create a new object here that wasn't necessarily an image, but create a new thing for the artifacts. That had a nice property where the references were only on something that had blobs. And so you didn't get into this looping scenario because the thing that you're adding could only ever point to a blob. So it could never do this loop in that, in that scenario. Um, so that was one. And the other was, we had a second proposal out there, I think, um, Dan and some other people are working on that one where we were just adding the reference to just all kinds of different places in here. And that was the one that was a little bit more concerned over the looping. And so I just wanted to raise that concern. And it's a question of whether we modify that proposal so that that proposal is only applying to the image or do we want to create a new object? And so I think those are kind of the two big cases. And no matter what we do with this, there's going to need to be a new API call. And so all the stuff we were talking about with adding that new extension, that's going to be part of the challenges that's going to have to be implemented at the registry level to support this. Because you need a uh, way you can you need a way you can query and say, I pulled, I pulled A1B2C3. Tell me all the stuff that's attached to it. Cause and, and and that's what we're working through, but I, I feel like even this when I'm looking at this model, it's not reflected correctly. I don't know. Uh, so uh, I had a proposal that uh, just uh, uh, it, it uses the current index uh, index image manifest layout, but it adds um, some restrictions to it. And um, I'd like to I'd like to show you what that looks like. So. Basically what we have is um, we, have an, uh, we have an image index, except that it also has a reference type to it. Um, and we put some restrictions on it. Uh, the first re restriction is that uh, the reference and uh, the reference 
descriptor cannot match any of the descriptors that are in the list of manifests. And then the second one is that the descriptor cannot uh, point to an image index. Um, and so what you get from that is uh, you'll be able to reuse the image index as uh, something that can reference other blobs as long as um, you know you don't have this kind of reference where you can do that that creates the circular reference so, so a bunch of these I, I was looking through a bunch of the samples I don't think you can create circular reference I don't think you were creating circular references with what you're doing until you say there's it's got to be an object that can link to other manifests is, is the requirement. And so you're creating a link from an object that can link to other manifest and to another manifest. Yeah, so um, I think what I'm saying over there is that, uh, you know, you can't have this guy, uh, this guy pointing here and, you know, this one of these, one of these descriptors pointing here as well. I guess where I'm going with that is all of your errors there are still, there are no loops in there. Yeah. You're you're coming from that top S bomb and point down. So it's without having that loop, but I'm not as worried. About it. I've lost track of time. I've lost track of time and follow it in, in thinking through this, but it's at the top of the hour and I've got to drop. Um, good discussion. Uh, I think, I don't know if, if y'all want to stay talking about it, I can actually give somebody else the the, the host or whatever. Um, so I shared this with the group. Uh, if y'all have uh, questions about it, then I, I have a list over here about open questions that I'm trying to um, answer. Now I'm not saying to get, I'm not saying get rid of image index and start a new, I'm saying modify the image index such that you add a type called reference that has these restrictions. And it looks to me at least um, after going through all of these scenarios that this will work. And it doesn't require much, I mean, it requires a change in the image spec, but it's not a big change. Got to jump to sadly, but <laughs> okay. yeah, I would like to talk about more though. I, I also have to jump, but let's do this again next week okay, or so on Slack or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, Slack works also, but it's on it's on the Slack thread. Uh, uh, please tell me if I'm thinking about this incorrectly in some way or the other. Um, I would like to see this in the spec. So thanks a lot. Thank you. See you later, everyone. Thank you for changing the time, Vincent.